Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video uh, I'm putting together a helicopter build and I have to solder up some XT60 um, battery connectors and wire connectors. Um, I've got a couple of other soldering videos on my channel like bullet connectors and deans and whatnot so I thought maybe I would throw in the XT60 real quick. Uh, it's a pretty simple connector of course as always you have a male and a female counterpart. Um, typically the 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 battery packs are going to have the male uh, and the charger would have the female or vice versa. I mean, there is no set standard for it, to be fair. You can put them either way. Um, but just like any other uh, connector, let's take a quick look at it. Um, these are really nice. I really like the XT60s. Um, they're, they're really well shielded um, and the bullets inside are really nice. I don't know if I can get this on camera or not, but on the plastic there, it does show you the positive and negative leads so you know where to connect accordingly uh, and then one thing I do like is the cups are reversed right so you've got a cup facing this way and then a cup facing that way that way you got uh, a little bit more of a wire separation going on there um, just to kind of keep everything secluded I really like that and then these ones that I purchased also come with a little cap so you'll put the cap on your wires once everything's soldered up you close up the cap and it kind of keeps everything sealed in there um, I am still going to apply heat shrink onto mine, so I'm going to heat shrink them and then I'm going to cap them. Uh, is that excessive? Maybe, but that's what I'm going to do. So I've got my XT60 series connector right here. Um, I've just got me some, some wires sitting over here because I'm actually using, I'm going to be making a wire harness here. Uh, this is a 14 aug wire that I'm going to be using and then I've already just pre-cut a couple pieces of my shrink tubing that I'll be using. Um, and as always guys, make sure your soldering gun's nice and hot, get everything ready. If you guys have watched any of my other soldering videos, um, hopefully you guys are experienced enough to know about things like the heat bridge, uh, to flow your solder pool instantly. As always, if your soldering gun is sitting around, always make sure that it does have some liquid solder on there. And anybody that's going to make any comments, no, I don't have a fan going on in the room. Uh, I probably should, but it's just a real quick video, so that, that's at my own discretion. A lot of my soldering videos, everyone complains that I don't have a fan, but I used to solder for a living, so trust me, I'm aware of all the risks, and I know all that stuff involved. So, um, Alrighty, guys, so first things first, um, as always, you're going to want to pre-tin your wires. Um, I prefer, I, I don't really use like the whole helping hands and stuff that often, so I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I use... A pair of vice clamps is almost one of the best soldering tools that you can use because it just serves so many different purposes. Like for example, watch, I'm going to be able to pre-tin this wire. So the wire itself is already exposed and cut. Let's go ahead and let's get, let's get a bit of a zoom in here so we can check this out. Um, it's already exposed and it has been a little bit pre-tinned, but I'm just going to kind of freshen it up. And again, guys, it's just a wire. It doesn't really need that much going on, so I can literally just set it right against this. The reason I like the vice clamps is they're metal, I can't hurt them, they can get hot, uh, no damage can be done, you know, things of that nature. So, get my soldering tip, I'm going to clean it off really nice, and basically I'm just going to freshen up the already pre-tinned wire. Um, I don't need to get too heavy on the solder, so, because we're also going to be pre-tinning our cup as well. So, again guys, all you're going to do is just touch your, your uh, create your heat bridge, right? Get your liquid solder flown on the tip first. And then as soon as you touch it, it should start flowing. Once you get that, just go ahead and add a little bit. Boom. There you go. You got a pre-tinned wire. And that just kind of livens it up. It just I'm just refreshing the already tinned solder on there. You don't need much. And then what we're going to do next is we can set our wire off to the side. Now, for, for all intensive purposes, since we're doing uh, an XT60, um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put my cap onto the wire. And since I'm kind of going a little bit on the high end here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put my heat shrink on. Now, the way these caps inlay, though, is they're, 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 they're like, a, like a, a cutoff, if you will. So my heat shrink that I have is, is basically the exact diameter of the cutoff. But to make sure that I can get in there and get everything uh, fastened down, give me a quick moment here. One thing that I usually like to do with my heat shrink 
is on the end that's going into the connector, I'll go ahead and just kind of stick some pliers in there. And ever so gently, I'll just kind of stretch it out. So you just kind of pull the pliers apart just a little bit. Don't rip the heat shrink, but if you stretch it just a little bit, it'll allow you to kind of slide it up and really tuck it in there, okay? So just a quick Freddy, Freddy Can Fly tip for you. And we'll slide our heat shrink on like that, okay? And then let's go ahead and we'll get ready and we'll, uh, we'll pre-tin the connector. Alrighty guys, so now that we've got the wire pre-tinned, we've got the heat shrink on there, we've got our cap on there, or, or what have you, based upon what kind of a, a connection joint you're making. Let's go ahead and let's pre-tin the cup. Um, again, there's a million different ways you can do this. Uh, the easiest way for me is to just heat it and then we'll flow a little bit of solder in there. Uh, let's go ahead and let's find, so I'm gonna do the positive wire. So make sure that you, you um, Find the correct terminal, right? Make sure you got your plus and minus. I have to disclose, right? Plus is red, minus is black. If you're using some sort of a freaky different uh, color scheme, just make sure you mat uh, match your stuff up accordingly, okay? Uh, but what I'm going to do is, again, I'm just using my vice clamps. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, without damaging the connector at all, I'm just going to set it right into my clamps, tighten down the bottom so that it's got a nice firm hold. And now the way this is going to work, guys, is we don't want to put a, a lot of solder into there. Uh, but we want to get just enough that we can actually flow the joint. Um, and again, like in a lot of my previous segments where I talk about the uh, what I call the heat bridge. Let's see if we can get in here. Um, anytime you touch a liquid solder to a solid solder, uh, the liquid is always going to cause it to melt. Basically almost like instantly, okay? I want to make sure we can get a nice, good view in there. Let's see if we can get in just a little bit more. That ought to be pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean the tip of my gun. Make sure it's free of all the old, you know, kind of brownish, saturated solder, okay, and then I'm going to retin the tip. And now what I'm going to try to do here, what we're trying to accomplish is we want to create a heat bridge where we can flow solder instantly onto that and then we're going to kind of fill up the cup a little. Don't overfill it um, just enough, right? So I'm going to put the tip right here, create my heat bridge, and there we go. You'll see that this will now flow instantly in there. So go ahead and fill it up. Just enough. Sometimes let it sit there for a minute and then back off. Now, as soon as you back off, you've now created that nice little heat bridge. So, actually, I need I need a little bit more solder in there, right? So, now that I've got that liquid pool, it's hardened by now. But now, if I just uh, clean the tip, okay, Ooh, got a little bit of debris on there, too. Let's clean that off. Now that I've got that first uh, heat bridge established, all i got to do, guys, is just, just uh, get a little bit of liquid solder. And I'm going to try to get a little bit more of a pool in there. So as soon as I touch it, it should flow. Look at that. flows instantly. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Boom. Okay. So now, next step is we're going to try to make the wire onto there. And basically, as long as we have our heat bridge established correctly, all we need to do is introduce the wire. So let's go ahead and let's take our wire, which is now pre-tinned, and um, I'm going to just kind of kind of set it into place where it needs to go. And again, this does this is one of those situations where it does come uh, in handy to have a set of those, uh, what do they call them, like helping hands or, or what have you. Um, but since I'm a, I'm a one-man band, I just got to kind of do this all on my own. So I'm going to do my best to try to demonstrate this for you on camera. I'm going to zoom her out just a little. And then a really important thing to notice while we're doing this, guys, is when to back off, right? We don't want to overheat the connector. We don't want to warp the casing. So as soon as your solder flows, you're going to kind of feel it in your hand. It's going to, it's going to flow, but then it's going to just, it's going to like grab. It's going to mate together. As soon as you feel it all become one pool, let off immediately. Hold it into place, and then you'll feel it harden within almost a couple of seconds, right? It's very, very instantaneous, uh, the way that this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's give this a try. I'm going to pre-tin my tip again. Now, since I'm kind of doing the XT60, let's try coming from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put my wire into place. 
Okay, I'm going to pay close attention here. Let's see if we can get this to flow. Make sure we get that heat bridge. There we go. Okay, it's flowing. And it made it right there. Let off. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Back away. Okay, there she is. You'll see how quick that happens, guys. A lot of the problems that occur with people when it comes to soldering is, is heat. They will sit and they will hold on to that bad boy all day and it ends up warping the casing, uh, damaging the connector, and in some cases if you try to use it afterwards, you're putting yourself at a potential high risk situation where it could fail. Okay, so let's take, let's see if we can get a really good zoom in on, on how this connector turned out. I'm going to try to really stress my camera here, <laughs> if we can. So there it is, guys. Look at, I mean, that's, I don't, I don't brag as often as I like, but I think that right there is perfection. I mean, you can't, that's textbook, right? You can't get it any better. It's nice and straight. And you can tell that the way that the, uh, the cup flowed right into the wire um, that right there is a lifelong connection. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, yes, you could pull it apart if you were strong enough, but uh, realistically, plugging and unplugging your packs and everything, you should never really have to worry about this particular connection coming off. Now, of course, I'm going to need to do the black side as well, the negative, um, but just for all intents and purposes, once your connection join is done, I can go ahead now, look at this, since I stretched my heat shrink, I can literally just stretch that bad boy right up there and you'll see that it goes all the way down into the base. So there's nothing exposed. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get a lighter and I'll heat shrink that down or a heating gun, whatever you guys like to use. And then boom, once that's done, we come in with our cap. I'm not going to snap the cap on right now because you know, i got to get to do the other side. But you guys can see that. So actually, I'll do the other side real quick and then I'll come back and just show you guys what the final connection looks like. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I got the uh, other side all completed. Um, as you can see here, we've got the heat shrink and everything on there. And it looks good, it looks, it looks clean, it looks professional, it looks reliable. So now what we can do uh, with this particular series connector is just slide our cap right over. And snap her on. And ba-boom! Let's get a good zoom in here. This is the finished XT... Um, uh, I lost my train. Uh, XT60, sorry guys, it's been a long day. Uh, XT60 series connector is done right there. Um, I really like the protective housing, but I do like to add the additional heat shrink. It just makes me feel good. Because um, I know that, you know, if like water got in there or something, at least it's got that extra barrier over all the um, copper or gold plated connectors or whatever it is that's in there. But, I mean, that's robust, guys. I mean, it's, it's going to be very hard to break or distort this connector at all. And then, of course, what I'll do now is I'll take the time on my battery pack and I'll uh, solder up the female joint. Boom. And they plug in very well together, too. They, they mate well. I mean, they're very stiff. Ugh! You got to really work in the pins and kind of wear them out a little bit. There you go, guys. Just a real quick uh, heli tips and tricks video. This is soldering the XT60 series connector, the Freddy Can Fly way. Uh, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more comment or content, if you will. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Remember, my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you. Mm -hmm.